Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dreamstead. I'm Kai. I'm Jen. And today we are going to be talking about some of the tips and tricks that we wish we knew the first time we process chickens. So guys, last year when we harvested up these chickens, we didn't do some of these things. And at the end of the day, and it was close to an eight hour day, um, my back was killing me, and just overall our efficiency was pretty poor. So some of these tips will definitely help. Yeah. We processed half of our Cornish cross broilers yesterday. Um, we didn't film. We ended up having a bunch of friends come over and made it an educational party. We had like 10 to 12 people over here just learning about sustainable meat and food and backyard chickens and, uh, and the whole process of processing your own meat. So that was really fun. It was really neat. I wish we could have filmed it, but uh, it just would have been difficult with everybody learning and, and processing. So we are going to be processing the rest of these down here in a couple of weeks and we'll go through that whole process with you guys. We're also bagging up all of the chickens that we processed yesterday so we'll go through that process uh, how we put them into shrink wrap bags and put them get them ready for the freezer basically. All right so one of the first things that we now know that we wish we knew the first time we did this is you want everything in close proximity to each other, each station immediately following the, the previous one. So um, basically what we have here, we put this door in a few weeks ago, if you'll remember that. So we can go in, we can grab the chickens, and then we come out and we have our killing cones immediately out of the door. Um, from the cones, we had our scalding water set up right here. It's just enough space to have a couple of people in each station watching, observing, and trying stuff out. Normally, I think we would have this more over here, the killing cones right here, just to make them even closer if it was only the couple of us doing this. And then we have our chicken plucker, which in a previous video you saw us put this shroud on here. Um, this thing worked great. It did eject a couple of feathers out the bottom, but uh, all in all, this thing was awesome. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check that out. Then we have our cold water baths. So we had two barrels set up here for cold water baths. Normally, if it's just Jen and me, then this process here uh, ends up going pretty quick and we build up some chickens in this cold water bath, this first one, before they go to the processing table. Uh, yesterday because it was a slower process educational process and everybody was pretty much going through the whole process with each bird uh, we didn't use this barrel very much at all <clears throat> then we have our processing tables and then our final cold water bath over here we have the evisceration station this is kind of my domain um, a huge thing we learned from last time get these tables to a better working height so we put some blocks under them um, um, and ideally they're kind of sloped backwards as well. A few reasons. You're gonna clean the chicken up on this table and then we always have our hose spray everything down after each bird. Cle keeps everything really, really clean, um, especially if somebody accidentally hits a gut or something comes out, it's nice to flush it along with the blood and feathers. Um, also to have a bucket system. So we have it as orange is the trash. So the head, the guts, Go in here, green is keep, so feet, and then our livers and hearts and necks would go in this bucket. From here, it's easy to manage, throw stuff in. Once your bird's rinsed off and clean, it goes back into this bath. This is where the chickens have been sitting overnight in uh, cold water that gets their body temperature down below 40 degrees within two hours, and then they go through rigor mortis and then come back, and now we can bag them up. Now typically we only have one of these processing tables, but having a bunch of people here yesterday all learning this process right here takes is one of the longest processes of the whole day. So we had anywhere from six to eight people around these tables at any one given time processing chickens together, which was really cool um, and a, a, just a really neat educational experience. Now we try to 
use as much of the waste from the chickens as possible. So Jen was talking about these buckets that we have over here, this bucket for hearts and livers and necks. That all gets processed down for dog food toppers. This bucket with the chicken feet in it, we dehydrate those into dog treats. Fantastic dog treats. If you've never let your dog eat a dehydrated chicken foot, oh. And so this bucket of waste, we processed about 35 to 40 birds yesterday, and we had about a half a bucket of what would be unusable for us waste, which is just heads and guts. And all of that we take out to the desert out here um, in an area that is legal for us to dump it, and it goes out to all of the, all of the local wildlife, and it's gone within 12 hours of us dumping it. Uh, we also dump all of our blood out there. We don't use that for anything. Um, but those are the only things that we personally don't use in some way or fashion. All right, people always ask us what we do with our chicken feathers when we're done plucking them. We do add them to our compost. Um, as you can see, they're needing to be mixed in and buried right now. But feathers are a great resource of carbon for your compost and then for your garden. And so I highly recommend keeping these guys. It does take a little bit of work, but it's definitely worth it. So guys, as you can see, our system has a really good flow and it's very efficient. I'd highly recommend kind of playing with your layout and seeing what makes the most sense for you and your setup. It's also really important to pace yourself. And the uh, first times that we did this, we just kind of cranked through, rushed it, um, and you just end up killing your back you kill your body the next day you don't even want to get up to bag them no. <laughs> so just take your time pace yourself with this process it takes a while and that's okay just be expectant of that and I'd recommend like invite some friends over even if they have no idea what they're doing um, that was all us at one point um, one of our favorite things about the dream set is being able to educate people and it was also inspiring hearing so many people being like man guys thanks this was such a cool opportunity and experience and to see a person who's never been around meat but eats meat or the meat killing process but eats meat to catch their own bird and go through the whole system um, and then later we had a fantastic barbecue it's just rewarding and I think it creates that connection and some of the reason we started growing and producing our own food as well all right so now we are going to get the uh, the what normally is the scalder propane torch, everything moved over by the tables because we're going to be bagging and we're using a heat shrink bag that dunks in the water. So we're going to actually move that torch and uh, propane stove over here because again, we don't want to be walking super far. So this was a perfect spot for it yesterday behind you here, but now it needs to be over here. So we're going to get moving that and get bagging some birds. All right. So here are some of the remaining Cornish cross broilers. So we've got about 30 or so left um, and those we will grow out for another two to four weeks depending on uh, on their size and what we uh, think would be think would be best for processing them uh, right now they're five weeks old so we usually process seven eight or nine weeks depending on the birds and so we'll just kind of see where they get to and uh, where we want to process them all right so with this chicken bagging process we need a couple of tables we use one that doesn't have anything on it and the other one we cover completely with towels so something else we do we try to reuse and recycle all the water so on actual harvesting day any water that's in buckets we drain out along these trees and now we have our hose that we're siphoning the water to drain these two barrels again then we water these popular hybrids on our property so on processing day some of the some of the little stuff gets missed or or left um, and so we're just doing a little bit of final plucking here and a little bit of cleanup here and there that needs to be make sure that the organ cavity is completely uh, completely emptied cleared out no missed lungs yeah some of that stuff on the inside um, also something I've noticed in the past that once they go through rigor mortis and they are cold it is a little bit easier to get some of these tougher feathers off 
these little pin feathers is what they're called, the little, uh, the little nubs of feathers that haven't quite grown into full feathers yet. They're pretty tough to get out uh, on processing day. Side note about the cold water barrels, so uh, we keep them in there overnight. So last night it got down to about 33 degrees um, and yesterday the highest temp was about 50 uh, with like some weird weather fluctuations. So we just kept an eye on the temperature of the barrel, uh, of the water in the barrel, and we didn't have to add any ice at all. We also filled the barrels the day before processing because it was going to get down to 31, and so it got that water nice and chilled overnight, and it stayed cold all day. <clears throat> but here when we process in a few weeks, that story might be completely different. It might be a lot warmer. And so then we just put big ice blocks in the water and cool down the entire barrel. So it works pretty good. All right, guys, so she's looking pretty good here. And I just want to show you kind of the importance of doing one more clean out the day after. Um, this is its esophagus still and just some stuff. And so now that it's second clean out, she is good to go. OK, so now the bird comes over to my station here where I will dry the bird completely inside and out. There will be some like natural juices that will stay in the bag from the bird itself. So by cleaning and drying all of the water off of the excess water of uh, the bird, you end up only having that juice from the bird in the freezer bag. And um, otherwise it's just way too wet in there and you run the risk of leaking out of the bag. And then into the bag goes. Like I said, these birds are on the small side for these bags. I like to take a tube and go straight down into the body cavity of the bird. Easiest for me. Trying to show you what we're doing here. So then we're just cinching the bag, <clears throat> pulling it as tightly around the bird as possible, keeping that tube in there. Really secured. Putting our zip tie on, making sure that everything is nice and cinched down. And we put that zip tie on as tightly as we can <clears throat> with that tube in the middle of it. Okay, and that will allow the air to escape without having to put a pin prick in the bag. Next over here to our 180 degree water. One, two, three, dunk, squeeze. Make sure that all of that air is coming out. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Squeeze again, get all of that air out so you can see that bag is shrinking up around the bird. One more dunk here. And there we go. Now, let's try to do this right here for you guys to see. We pull the tube and cinch that zip tie down the rest of the way. Get it really tight. And now that bird is packaged up, we can cut this excess off and lay it out here to dry. Now if our temperatures outside here were any warmer, it's about 40 degrees right now and we're somewhat shaded, but if it were any warmer right now, then we would want to be pretty quick about getting this dried off and into the freezer, but uh, because it's nice and cool out here, we can take our time a little bit and let these air dry. Chicken here, huh? All right, we're gonna get copyrighted. Ah! What you doing, babe? Warming up my fingertips. <laughs> Another so, pro tip. So we had to do this yesterday, harvesting. 
It's never been that cold while we harvest birds, so we had a hand warming station, which was pretty clutch. Another tip with the uh, with the bagging process, the deeper you can put more water in here than you can when you're scalding the birds. When you're scalding them, you're being pretty vigorous to get the water in between those feathers. But when you're doing the bagging, the deeper the water is, the more that water pressure pushes around the bag and gets that water out of there faster. Update on where we're at. So we've got all these birds nice and packaged up, sealed up, drying off, air drying here. They're still nice and cool. Um, and then there's a couple of birds that had some skin defects either from the scalder being too hot or from you know some other some other things so we're keeping them for ourselves for sure this one's just in a zippy because we'll be cooking that one probably tomorrow or today like this guy this guy's got some tears you can see skin's a little rougher a little orange got a little hot and wing blown out basically just cooked the skin we just keep those for ourselves we do sell some to uh, family and friends and uh, so we just don't sell the ones that have the defects like that. We keep them for ourselves and that's one of the kind of, you know, one of the things that we take on ourselves when when we have other people helping out. If, if they're learning and they uh, nick a bird or something like that, that's okay. It's for us, so. Still tastes yummy. Uh, Jen, the mama hen's working on the last chicken that we processed yesterday. And so here's what we got. All in all, there'll be 34. Is that accurate? 34 that we processed yesterday? Yeah. So that means we got somewhere, give or take, 30 in coop still. Chilling over there. They're all pretty content right now. They uh, missed they the guillotine. They yeah. yeah. Like, we're good. Okay. Next step for the day is we need to decide which of these birds we want to sell. So we pick out the better ones there. And then we dry them off completely, make sure that the bags are 100% dry, ready to go into the freezer uh, at this station here. And then we put our labels on them and weigh them. And then we mark down what our average weights are. And Weight on this one is 213, 3 pounds 4 ounces, 232, 213, this one's right at 3 pounds, 3 pounds 1 ounce, another 3 1, 28, 27, 215, 3 1, Okay, so we've got our chickens, we've got the chickens that we're selling, we've got them labeled with their weights and their prices and all of that. We price our chicken pretty, uh, pretty low. We want to make sure that we're affording our friends and family the same opportunity of eating good quality homegrown meat. Um, so the point of our operation is not to make profit point of our operation is to sell about half of what we grow and then to break even to end up with free meat for ourselves and uh, and that's and that's good for us that's that's what we want um, and so we just checked all of the numbers and we are well within our uh, our break even point um, we are selling more than half of these chickens uh, that we processed yesterday and then you know of those we might sell less than half of those but so it'll it'll average out it'll even out but anyway these are ready to go into the freezer get frozen up and then be delivered and these are ready to go into the freezer for us minus this one that'll just go into the fridge we'll probably cook it up tomorrow in a nice crock pot meal or something like that but yeah something easy something easy yeah. All right. It's all worth it. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you found this video to be informative. And if you're getting into chickens, please post your questions uh, in the comment section down below. We would love to do a uh, like good tutorial on taking care of backyard chickens and do some Q&A stuff. So mm -hmm. post your questions up down below. Uh, let us know if we're doing a good job. And you know, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. 
and uh, consider subscribing here on the channel. We do stuff like this all of the time. Yeah. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. All righty. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Make it a great day. Adios. Peace out. We got work to do still. Two.